Okay, so I guess most people here probably already know Miros uh, who's here from Bathing and is going to, to, going to be talking today about how we have those cooling branch algorithms and Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much uh, you know, for suggesting me as a speaker. Uh, it's a big pleasure to be back here in this building after maybe six years or something. Uh, it's really an honor to speak at this center since I remember back then I used to come here as a physics undergrad and not understanding almost anything with the math talks here. Uh, so it feels really good to be finally here and hopefully having some, something hopefully sensible to say. And uh, let me start with a disclaimer. Uh, as I already mentioned, I'm a physicist, which means that I'm not going to be rigorous, so you shouldn't expect any rigor from me. And instead, what I'm going to uh, tell you is some like, general picture that string theorists and, and theorists uh, have when they are talking about the subject of genetic representation theory, and uh, tell you about some recent developments. In the field. Uh, what I'm going to talk about will be mostly a review uh, of work done by many, many author authors throughout the past maybe 20 years. Um, and especially towards the end of the talk, I'm going to talk also about some development that I've done uh, with mostly Dr. Pelto, uh, but also with the Prenner Institute, Tomasz Prochaska, who's now in Munich, but coming uh, back to Prague in December, so hopefully you guys are going to interact with him. So I'll tell you roughly what the theory is. Time. 
And this M theory doesn't have any sensible definition. We basically don't know what this M theory is. But we do have strong hints and very good uh, that, that such a theory exists. And the hints come from studying various aspects of, of the theory from, from in, in different limits that are mutually uh, satisfying high, like very complicated or very uh, non trivial consistency conditions. So we have many consistency conditions and many like, kind of views on M theory. So even though we are not able to really tell what M theory is, we can say a lot of things about it and we have strong hints that it should exist. And what we are going to use uh, this M theory for is to actually deduce something about about math. There are, in particular, there are two uh, there are two constructions how to obtain from M theory a quantum field theory. Thing, 
why does it have to be low energy? Is it because we can't? Yeah. We don't care about the large excitations, and the large excitations in plug-in three action uh, are just too large. Okay. So uh, that's kind of okay. the reason. But everything what I'm saying now is very very handmade. It, it couldn't be handmade. Uh, it it could barely be handmade more. Uh, because I'm not telling you anything, I'm not telling you what hand theory is, I'm not telling you what hand five brains is and, and, and two brains are. There's no word volumes theory, there's basically nothing. Uh, but we still do believe that these objects exist because of various compactification, because we can make sense of compactifications and really uh, see the hints of the higher dimensional geometry coming from studying those things that are expected to, to be reproduced from, uh, from, these, from these two constructions. So, what, what, what you just said, and I kind of agreed, is also again just yeah, kind of a motivation idea. Okay, so these two constructions are expected to lead to well defined or better defined lower dimensional PFTs. And a slightly better definition. Uh, they are slightly better defined. At least well defined for physics purposes. And is it possible to compare the things you get from the application with the low energy levels? Sometimes, yeah, so that's actually a good point. Sometimes you can construct the same theory in different ways. Uh, either as a theory on stacks on these brains uh, or, or, or on stack of brains and uh, from quantification on on, uh, on some and other minus D. These two are usually related uh, these two are usually related by the duality of M theories. M theory contains or string theory contains various dualities, S duality and T duality that I don't have time to talk about. That often relate configurations of brains and configurations of uh, of compactification, and this comparison that you are just uh, that you are just mentioning leads to very notable checks of these dualities of string theory and net theory. So whenever I think that some things could be in both ways produced, it's subtle or. <coughs> So I would have to study. Uh, I would have to tell you what string theories are and how to compactify in theory and, and uh, these kind of things. Tell you what the duality is. And I would have to also tell you what are the what are the brains and various string theories and what are the dualities between them. And just what I'm just telling you that uh, there is a system of dualities that create various string theories and M theories among each other with different configurations of brains. And you can just take two two. Dual objects. Well, I, mean, I, I, I don't want to go much to details, uh, but you can get two different looking theories um, from different string theories or M theories in the presence of different brains or proportional geometries and study the, uh, the two QFTs that you get from one and the other ones. And sometimes the QFTs just turn out to be exactly the same, and sometimes they are the same up to, like they, they for example, contain some uh, subsectors of the observable that, that are the same. But they, they are infrared dynamics, high energy dynamics is the same. And you can compare those, and this leads to dualities between QFTs. So sometimes you can compare these two constructions, they are generally different, but sometimes you can compare them. And if you can compare them, they are usually, the reason is that they are somehow related. Uh, like some duality and string theory or M theory. Maybe also from a different perspective is that uh, you can use this kind of technique to uh, study extensions of regular dualities. So for instance, not regular duality is a good example where we actually know whether it's a string theory, but you can take a study scan and look at this kind of T tool and you can study the two QFTs to see if they are the same or if only some subsector. Yes, that is actually a good point. One of the one of the example of, uh, examples of such uh, is, um, uh, is a mirror symmetry. For mirror symmetry, uh, you have 
confer. I'm not, I'm not sure if you've heard of Mirosynthy. Yeah, yeah, I talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Mirosynthy is a very synchronial uh, manifold. And well, anyway, I, I, don't, I don't want to, to go to it. Maybe we can, we, can, we can talk about it later. And uh, yeah, yeah Mir Mirosynthy is one of the examples of these things. And, Again, you can study brains on one side and the other side. On one side, you're studying some Lagrangians. On the other side, you're studying some coherent cheese, and uh, they do seem to match, right? And, uh, you can describe everything from the physics perspective by studying some longer dynamics of these uh, Lagrangian brains or the brains for the these, uh, so these coherent cheese. Algebras of operators. Is just that there's this M theory, there's way how to construct PFTs and look at some sub algebra of some operators uh, that naturally allows us to associate with geometry and algebra or possibly its representation. Uh, and I would have a very nice question. Uh, what is the basically useful for? Because uh, you presented QFT as uh, some algebra operators that came on the open space, so we actually have uh, some kind of uh, Yes, but very often you cannot make sense about 
about uh, you don't know what the what, what the what the so often in the PFTs as as uh, physicists write them, you are not able to really make sense what the paper space is, uh, what is the what what is the, the the space of operators and these kind of things. You cannot really make sense of these things. But often uh, you can do it at least for those subsectors of some operators. And what a twist is is really. So, I, I, can, I can tell you briefly about these days. Okay. And if you are uh, interested in details, uh, there is a work of mostly with them. Uh, and then other people. But basically, the idea is that if you have supersymmetric theory, these are characterized by the fact that it, they, they contain, uh, contain some. some uh, Pre-known generators. That's where to move. Uh, generators of the of the time time translate of the of the time or space translations. If the suppression tree is big enough, you might have an operator that squares to zero. And it's natural to do, once you have an operator uh, that squares to zero, it's natural to ask what is the uh, what is the subsector of the theory uh, uh, that lives in the cohomology of the of, of the operator. This turns out to carve out the subsector of uh, of the full physical theory. This process is called twisting, and uh, it usually captures, as I, as I told you, some topological or homomorphic uh, subsectors, sectors of the theory, which can be defined uh, very rigorously. And this can be very often defined very, very rigorously because what it leads to is very often simple things like, uh, like studying these cohomology. So, for example, if you look at this, so let, let me give an example. If you do the logical string as a twist, or something that's called n equals to supersymmetric quantum mechanics, this target m, so this quantum mechanics uh, of maps from R. It can be sort of as, as quantum field theory of maps from R that parameterizes time to M. This twist was shown by a famous paper written, so leads to Morse theory. Often does, uh, but I again don't want to go to the details. But yes, yes. Because sometimes you have to. Uh, you do have to do that because you have to like this object. Uh, you have to multiply some of the fields by uh, by. With by some bundles in order to in order some of the fields to, to become scalars and some of the uh, some of the vectors and these kind of things in such a way that you get uh, the pre the correct homomorphic and uh, or, or topological sectors as, as you want. But I don't want to go to the details again. Yes. But the problem is that fortunately you don't have to have a differential. If you want to have a differential you need to address something which is like a scalar like yes. something like a exactly. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So this guy is not. Uh, this, this, this guy is not a scalar at the beginning. It, it, it is something that is spinner, and you want to somehow twist it in order to get the scalar from spinner. So yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. So let me now.
briefly mention two uh, large examples where this has been done. There is an theory interpretation of a, uh, of a thing that later led, uh, or there was something suggested by M theory construction, and it later led to quite non trivial results in, uh, in mathematics. And the first one is sometimes called the literature APT and related modulai of in some tones. Okay, so the physics uh, enters geometric representation theory roughly at, in, in uh, by the work of Alda and Tachikawa. To do some calculations in n theory on flat space. C times C times C times C. One, two, three, four, five, plus one, plus one. And they put n and five rings. Dimension, right? What is what is the simple setup that you can think of? Unfortunately, the calculation they they do they need to integrate uh, uh, over some some moduli spaces. And, uh, the moduli space is non-compact, and they have to compactify it somehow. They do it by introducing the variance. What do you mean, strangely? Uh, I just, I just, the first term and the fourth, but why you don't put them on the first, second, and the third? There's more common, I think. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Later, later on, you're going to refine this picture, and it's actually to, to uh, 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 the picture is. What is the picture? You're just asking why you don't put them on the first, second, and the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
non commutative activity, as you can see, is controlled by the uh, by the deformation parameters here. So it's not like the last one. It's exactly. So fine. The concrete plane that they're is that. So if you want the second example that I want to talk about later, W2 is GL1 times Razor. Again, when I talk about these guys, I always mean the words I talk about them. Well, these are just parameters, and these are the equivalent parameters of some uh, uh, associated with the variables. These are from other variables, that's right. And one thing of them as polynomials related to them. You can think about them as, as polynomials. As polynomials. Okay. Yes, as a commutative. Yeah. Right. Yes. Is it solved free? Uh, it doesn't appear in this uh, in this context, but it's going to be important later on. Uh, well, this is something that has not been obvious uh, back then. That we can actually turn on a sum three, and it's very useful. And uh, this leads to uh, anyway. I, I will talk about it later. Sorry. Okay. Now let's see if I can. Thank 
CPR, the CP2 with some frame as a liquid. And it has also well known radiation construction <coughs> in terms of representations of the animation quiver. This framing of rank M, this means it's the M. Subject to the Aviation equations in some stability condition. So, this is just a mathematical description of object that the face is called uh, volumized space of instantons, and uh, these people have shown that there is an existing natural action that we are not on this uh, on this space. So this is one well-known example that kind of originated, or the idea originated from uh, from some considerations here of in Hans theory, and led to this nice construction in mathematics. Let me now tell you about a new, about another one, uh, slightly newer, and surprisingly even simpler, or in a sense, that is the so-called Coulomb branch. Started again with the work of physicists, namely Polymore, Dimovta, Dato, in 2012, and also later formalized by mathematicians, namely Graverman, Finkelberg. Who constructed associated algebras associated to some three dimensional theories? They did it by defining an algebra structure on on another moduli space. associated with data speci specifying the three-dimensional theory. I can write it down, but it again uh, take some time. Let me just, just show you how, how the reference looks like. So there's a connection of some G-bundle. The G-bundle, the G uh, is one of the part data of the uh, of the, of the gauge theory, capturing the gauge group, F on phi, and uh, phi is one section. And there's a moment map condition the gauge group X on phi uh, uh, has a handle direction on phi and the moment for the handle direction is, is new and mu on phi is zero. So basically there's such a system of equations on P1 and the mod moduli uh, they can be given uh, multiplication uh, on the on the coordinate ring uh, of the of, of, of the moduli solutions of these of these equations, but let me again uh, not go to the details and rather really tell you that Kodera and Nakajima and Roger Costello did this exercise for the low energy theory describing and, and two grades. So let me draw the same 
sequence of seeds that I would prefer. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Then I put M2s here. They're three dimensional. And here. And this led them to classify algebras AF. Again, I'm going to give the definition of AN later, in the later section, in, in the next section. But let me just tell you an example of A1. And this is just the universal involving algebra of an algebra generated by two generators. And this is derivative multiplied by epsilon 3. This is sometimes called epsilon 3 i h bar. Right? And the generators satisfy the obvious computation relation. Very simple thing. Okay, so there are, there seems seem to be two kinds of algebras, the WN algebras and the uh, and the uh, AN algebras that appear from very similar uh, and series. One coming from some consideration of the five brains and one coming from M2 brains. The question is whether there is some connection between them, since you can put both M5 brains and M2 brains uh, to this flat space at the same time, and whether there are some further uh, generalizations suggested by uh, well, And that's what I'm going to talk about in the rest of the talk. Algebra A1 and algebra 
W1. What I just said is not completely right because I have also included uh, included the negative powers of Z. But let me not talk about this issue at this point. It would require uh, maybe I can comment on it later. And let me consider the following calculation, sometimes called mirror transformation.
So I know this generalization is take product of n such vectors. Do the calculation. This is going to lead to some some coefficients in front of the uh, in front of the different different derivative terms, and this gives rise to the algebra that we have. Okay, so this is an old construction. Let me do basically the same thing, just slightly differently, and give a realization of the A and R.
is how that these guys exactly form the so-called lookout realization. Sounds. I mean, so the, 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 the 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so the whole construction, and uh, that's uh, I think you usually need it for all the twists to even make sense, uh, is in uh, Riemannian okay. geometry. Okay. So, yeah. so it, yeah. well, in the end, even in PFT, uh, the the real things are better defined than the uh, more version. Anyway, so uh, I don't really think. Okay, so to conclude,
is given by trace of B1 coming the theorem B2 to B3 plus I. There are three terms of I's I1, J1, I2, J2, I3, J2. Of gauge group UL, UM, and UM. 
at the different corners. Then you can ask what is the algebra of some preserved operators, uh, operators during some cohomology or some uh, or some Q in the supersymmetrical equation. It's a completely different story. Completely, there's no like if you didn't know that there's this duality, you would never guess that these two might be related. And this indeed leads to very 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 different uh, definition of the of the algebra in terms of some quantum momentum introductions. Like for example, this W zero one 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 two can be defined as a coset of GL two over GL one. And at first sight, it's not clear why this algebra is defined from this very du dual, very different looking perspective that we know is dual from the anterior configurations, but not the constructions, but not, not otherwise. Why this algebra should be the same as the one that you produce from the, uh, from the mirror transformation? And it turns out to be the case. So, was this learned by mathematicians? No. Or no. this is true? No. And uh, is there a proof that these are the same? No. Okay. I mean, I, I believe that they are. I just, uh, I'm curious if this gives you a, like a, a nice way to prove it. Uh, to the figure that a mathematician makes sense, let's say. There are some loopholes. There's a recent paper maybe from uh, one. A uh, month ago, where they did some kind of progress, but I don't think it's still uh, clear enough. So I, I would okay. say it still needs okay. a better understanding. Okay, is there any other questions? Well, uh, yeah. just make this known if two of them are vanishing. It's an old story. Ah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay, well, I want some more because I would like to. Uh, no, does it have any classical analog? Because, for example, if you if one knows that uh, representations, finite dimensional representations of simple complex group can be generated, can be uh, obtained as homologies, as zeros homology, of line bundles from these groups uh, using dual bond complexes and some doubling by way of the polar layer. So there are those uh, opposite of this in some sense.
this is sort of uh, simulated G as geo-edge in the Borodale lane uh, for a century, for decades. And uh, then uh, the scale of things are more uh, connected to physics and to Amazonians and uh, Amazonians and things. So it somehow unifies the picture. And I have an old article with Daniel who wrote, wrote about a representation theory on curves. I don't know. And uh, he has some uh, residues on uh, physical things. But uh, no. do you know what would Kirillov say? <laughs> no, so. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen his papers. Uh, but what you're saying very much reminds me to uh, or Nakajima or the way Nakajima is constructing the Clone Ranch algebras. So, I wouldn't be surprised if there, uh, there was, a, was, was a connection. Well, uh, that would be the place where, where I was signed. But for sure, the mathematicians are more interested in this, doing the analysis of it, are interested more in the regular, uh, in classic, more classical objects. Yeah, so. I cannot imagine that you have a quantum space and you have. Uh,